So basically, uh, this video was supposed to be titled "How to Score 80 Plus Marks in English." Is it possible? Question mark. Question mark. And I thought, wait, that's the wrong approach altogether. So it's now titled "How to Score 80 Plus Marks in English." It's possible! Exclamation. So I'm going to just give you a brief overview of what the question paper looks like, what the importance is, and how you can possibly crack it and do your 100%. Everybody's 100 is different, and I'm here to tell you how to get to your 100%. All right. So as you know, CDS. The English paper has 120 questions, which are a total of 100 marks, right? So if you're applying for OTA, then the English paper is half your paper because you lucky bums don't have maths. Uh, if you're applying for IMA, AFA, and INA, the English portion is one third of your total exam, right? So the thing is now, your, the syllabus, of course, remains the same, and the marking scheme remains the same. So you get plus 0.3 for a correct answer. And you know that there is negative marking, of course, that we have to account for to the tune of minus 0.27 for a wrong answer. So just a general tip before I begin with anything else, please remember, you're not just aiming to clear an exam. You're not just aiming to qualify an exam. Hopefully you're aiming for merit, right? So you need to shoot higher than say a 40% or a 33.3% because you know that saying, if you shoot for the moon, you land somewhere among the stars. So you need to shoot higher. You need to aim much higher than what you're actually even hoping to score, right? So 80 plus marks means now you're hoping to comfortably solve about 105, 110, hopefully even 115 questions out of 120. And remember in CDS, your English paper is checked first of all. And once you qualify it, your next paper is picked up. So it becomes all the more important, right? And my second and most important tip to all students, regardless of what exam you're sitting for, aim for discipline and dedication. Lots of students will come and ask me, how do we stay motivated, ma'am? It's so hard to stay motivated. It's very hard to remain motivated. And I'll always tell them, see, motivation is a very temporary construct. The next morning, you're going to wake up all stressed and motivated. And that day, you're going to delete your Instagram and your Snapchat. And you're going to delete your Netflix account and say, but that's not how it works. Because, you know, that morning, you're stressed you're motivated, but then by the by the time the evening comes around, some other thing has caught your attention, you're thinking of socialization, you're thinking of some girl, some boy, some show, some movie, some sport you want to play. So it's so much more important to stay dedicated and disciplined because discipline is going to take you through the long haul. Now that you have less than a month to go, this is how you're going to approach the exam. So just to take a look at the basic overall syllabus, the first kind of question, the first type of question you will encounter will be vocabulary. You will always get vocabulary questions, except for just two years in between, when they didn't surprisingly give you any synonyms or any antonyms, right? But here's the thing. Vocabulary is a huge portion of any exam, any competitive level exam. And I like to call vocabulary and spotting errors the two portions that will separate the qualifiers from the meritorious students. So these, pardon my very sexist use of the phrase, these separate the men from the boys. Girls, I'm really sorry. What I mean to say is these two questions will separate the people who will just barely qualify the exam versus people who will score really well and get merit. Okay, so for vocabulary, the first kind of question, of course, is the type of synonyms, is the kind of synonyms you will get. So synonyms, uh, you get up to 15 questions, right? And then you have antonyms. Sometimes I've noticed, based on a trend analysis that I've done of the previous years, the number of antonyms that they give you sometimes is up to 10, but again, a safe number to play with is 10 to 15, right? Then you have one word substitution. Now, remember, the number of questions is 120. The types of questions are many. So it's not necessary that every single year you will get questions from every single type. But again, like I always say, it's better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. So I would suggest expect there to be, again, up to 
15 questions from one word substitution. All three, they relate purely to vocabulary. And the best way to ace vocabulary at this point is, of course, everybody's told you all through your life, you should be reading newspapers. Hopefully, good newspapers like The Hindu and focus on the editorial columns. Um, it will help you in not just the vocabulary portion, but also reading comprehension where quick understanding and quick reading, fast reading, speed reading will come into play. And plus, you will need to keep up with your current affairs and, you know, world affairs, what, whatever is happening around the world. So read newspapers. If you read any kind of book, any kind of novel, great. But if you're not able to, then I'll give you a little helpful hint. I, dis I often discuss the importance of root words in class, root words as an R O O T. So English finds its roots from Greek, Latin, French, etc. And just Google common Greek and Latin roots. And I can assure you 40 to 50% of your vocabulary troubles will go away, right? Learn to associate certain words, learn to associate, associate certain letter combinations with words and vocabulary problems will seem like a thing of the past. Don't worry about those. Related to vocabulary also is a portion called idioms and phrases. There's not too much of a difference between what an idiom is, what a phrase is. A phrase is mostly universal in meaning and an idiom is more colloquial, colloquial as in used more in spoken language based on a certain dialect. So you could have idioms that come from a certain area a certain region based on a language, but they come under the blanket umbrella heading of a phrase, right? So idioms and phrases, will you will see up to, I would say, again, 15 questions. Now, when I say up to 15 questions, of course, I'm giving you the outer limit. You can get less than those as well. Again, now related to vocabulary and understanding of words very recently they have reintroduced when i say reintroduced at one time many years ago like maybe a decade plus ago they used to give you this question on spellings Ab spellings ki question mein kya hota tha? you would have four different variations four different versions of a word and you have to select the correct or the accurate spelling for many years in between, again, like I said, you it's not necessary you will get every single question of every single type every year. But for many years in between, we didn't see any spelling questions. But the last year, last year and a half has seen these questions as well. Earlier, CAPF, ACC and AFCAT used to get these, right? But CDSK questions, uh, CDSK syllabus mein ye hai. So prepare for it accordingly, right? So spellings also, again, you will get up to 10 questions, prepare accordingly, right? Now, then comes your sentence improvement type. Sentence improvement, or they could give you the title as transformation of sentences, not to get confused. See, however, the question is framed, your raw material of your information, your set of rules, your understanding of grammar, your understanding of roots should be so strong. I always give my students an example that, you know, you should have your raw material ready. It's like, you know, your recipe could change overnight, but the type of question could change overnight, but you should have the basic ready ingredients. We are ready, we are prepared. Okay. So a sentence improvement question could be where they've given you a question and a few words of those, of that question, of that sentence are in bold, either in bold or in italics. Italics is that font that is a little slanted, right? So they'll again give you four options. There will either be a grammatical error in the little bold portion or the sentence will be absolutely correct. So in case there is an error, you have to pick the option which gives you the correct um, version. Or in case you think the sentence is absolutely correct, there will be an option that will either say no error or no improvement needed. So in case you think the sentence is absolutely correct, go for it, mark no improvement needed. Transformation of sentences will follow the same format. Basically, again, it will be based on either grammar, it will be based on either um, idioms and phrases or a vocabulary, uh, you know, sort of question. Now, again, 
don't have to worry about transformation questions they will tell you sometimes they'll give you a sentence and in the bracket they will tell you what to do for instance if they say it is very hot today full stop the children cannot go out to play now in the bracket they'll say reframe the sentence using t o t o this is what is called t o t o comes under completion of sentences so it is very hot today full stop the children cannot go out to play so reframe it using t o t o you say it is too hot today for the children to go out and play and there will be one of the four options will be this correct version and you have to pick it right so again like i said don't worry about the kind of question just focus on strengthening your concepts strengthening your basis right your basics your foundation so a sentence improvement type or a transformation of sentences type can see up to 20 questions now in the past they've given 10 questions 15 questions but up to 20 questions in some previous year papers right so expect up to 20 practice accordingly right moving on so a closed test don't confuse the spelling with c l o s e this is c l o z e this is just i call this fill in the blanks for adults right again um this question can come in two ways you can either have a passage now there will be a blank in each sentence of the passage followed by four options four correct options uh, four options out of which you pick the most appropriate or the most accurate these again can have a basis of either grammar so it could be fill in the blank with the correct preposition with the correct article no article required or the part of speech could be under question or it could be a type of question that relates to vocabulary fill in the most suitable word appropriate word right so again like i said don't worry about it just prepare that this question closed test will come in two ways either a passage type or individual isolated sentences either which way you will see up to 10 questions for close test all previous year questions have had up to 10 questions of fill in the blanks right then comes a slightly time consuming but again not to be um, you know not to be feared it's a portion called ordering of words this will be a little time consuming but the pqrs type can be very very simple right so this will be quite scoring for you ordering of words is where a sentence is divided into p q r and s using your understanding of the rules of grammar and common sense and logic you will rearrange you will play around with p q r r and s right in some cases what they'll do is they'll give you a sentence one which is known as the introduction or they'll just term it one so sentence number one you don't manipulate the beginning that is the introduction you just play around with pqrs right so sometimes we see all right so up to 10 questions now the next type which is also related it's a cousin of ordering of words it's called rearrangement of sentences now again this is a little time consuming but it's not difficult in fact i consider it a little simpler than the other types why because it gives you a sent it gives you a statement one which is the introduction and statement six which is the ending so if you have the beginning and the ending playing around and manipulating pqrs becomes according to me it becomes simpler see again a very helpful hint is to pick up the subject for both these types of questions pick up the subject of the sentence so go in the go in the format s v o pick up the subject then figure out what is the subject doing the verb right subject verb and then additional information about the operations being performed by the subject in the sentence again p q r s that is all you will manipulate s1 is the beginning s6 is the end don't touch the beginning or the end just rearrange p q r s according to rules of grammar and common sense right sometimes your gut instinct works really well with these questions uh so some students also ask me ma'am how do we eliminate um the wrong responses because so many of these three of these or sometimes all four of these they seem very confusing i'll tell you what to do this is how i also solve these questions every year i sit for a lot of papers because when i'm sitting and making the answer keys i sit on an average for six you know papers a year 
and my aim is to always obviously go as error free as possible and um, be as fast as possible let's face it right so it's time plus accuracy as it will be for you so what i do is i use a numbering method if i figure out that maybe the sentence should start or the little passage should start with q i'll put one against q even on your question paper you can do the same right if i think r should follow because there's a logical link from q to r i'll put two against r then after i have my first two figured out i'll go to the options because if you read the options straight away there is a very high likelihood of you getting confused so here what i would suggest is use numbering and second of all um, pick up the first two thing first two options first two letters that you think it can start with so if you have the first two in your mind then eliminating the other options and arriving directly at an answer gets much simpler and you are less likely to make mistake right moving on reading comprehensions reading comprehension is your passage basically again cds sees sometimes even up to seven passages so what i have seen in the past is that they give you anywhere between 25 and 35 questions the good thing with these is with these questions is you don't have to solve every single question in every single passage but once you have one passage figured out the likelihood of being able to solve you know all three or all five questions in that passage becomes very high so again i would suggest uh take the time to actually try and understand work on reading through your you know reading of newspapers etc work on your speed a little bit and if you've been working on vocabulary trust me that'll be a lot of help as far as even reading comprehension goes comprehension by the way again is not another name for passage comprehension means complete understanding so your job is to read the text try and understand it as fully as possible and answer the questions that follow now uh reading comprehensions will require complete understanding and clarity of understanding and a detailed reading in three types of questions now these are the hints to keep in mind if you get a question related to summary of the passage you will need to read the passage completely if you get a question related to the writing style of the author then again it will require a detailed reading right uh, writing style of the author will also require an understanding of vocabulary because you will be only able to discern what kind of writing it is if you know what all four words mean if you're not comfortable with that question let it be no problem theek hai usko i'll tell you tukke bhi maarne hai attempt karna hai guess work bhi to kahan karna hai this is not the place so if you're comfortably able to solve questions great now the third kind of question in a reading comprehension question that you will require a detailed reading of the passage for will be the tone of the passage again this will uh, require an understanding of vocabulary because you have to be able to figure out exactly what kind of tone or underlying tone underlying tone runs through the passage i'll repeat if you're not comfortable with this question let it be there will be other places where you can attempt guesses let this not be it okay so 25 to 35 questions comfortably answer as many as you can now comes well the category that i call the big guns these will be your grammar questions right now you have spotting errors questions guys um see spotting errors will have questions from what i call a spotting errors checklist a checklist is where you have questions perhaps related to parts of speech parts of speech will see questions mostly from the difference between adjective and adverb right they won't tell you what it is but you have to have a basic enough understanding or like a thorough enough understanding where you're able to figure this out also a lot of times prepositions get asked a lot now again these will come under spotting errors questions right and not to forget what i call the golden rule of grammar is this rule called subject verb agreement i want you to look up these three types of errors go to previous year questions or you know figure out go through your old grammar notes go to the grammar bible ren and martin and figure out the rules of these three types 
and trust me your spotting errors questions are sorted now spotting errors questions sometimes they've asked up to 30 questions right and again like i said this is a portion where you can attempt guesses because a lot of times see most of you if not all of you have studied grammar in school or perhaps even college sometime or maybe you've taken training later in life so i always say that jo um, knowledge hoti hai na, you can't get rid of knowledge just by wishing it away. So dimag mein kahi na kahi hoti hai, that all that learning, all that knowledge is still there somewhere in some deep recess of your mind. So what you have to do is you have to read a question and already when you read the question, you may not know exactly what is wrong with it or how you're going to correct it, but immediately your gut instinct will kick in and you will know something is off, something is wrong. I want you to stay with that gut instinct because spotting errors is the one place where gut instinct bahut zyada kaam aati hai, right? I always tell my students, um, go with what your first reaction to a sentence is. So again, answer this in three steps. Read the question. And as soon as you read a question, it will somehow either seem completely correct to you or there will be one portion out of A, B, C or D which will seem off. Now, Upon the second reading, I want you to think about whether you can figure out what the error is or maybe how you can correct it. And on the third reading, upon the third reading, you'll be able to confirm your answer. If you think there is some sort of an error, just mark it. Mark A, B or C. If you think there's nothing wrong and the option D is no error, mark no error. So remember, if you do have to attempt guesses, I'll tell you the number of guesses we'll... we'll uh, attempt even our guesses in a slightly logical way that will negate the, neg the negative marking. Neto negative marking ne mat jana, right? So expect up to 30 questions, prepare accordingly and pay special attention to these three portions, parts of speech, prepositions and the rule subject verb agreement. Also related to grammar and especially the last two years, three years now have seen active passive questions, active passive, these are voice questions. 10 questions of active and passive voice. Now, either way, right? No, no, it's not necessary that you'll only get active to be converted into passive or vice versa. You can get any which way. And you have direct, indirect speech, which is also known as narration. So remember that indirect speech is also known as reported narration in case they use that phrase. That will also be about 10 questions. Not difficult. Again, refer to only if uh, only the only book I recommend, honestly, is the Bible of Grammar, which is Ren and Martin. I'll write that down. W-R-E-N, Ren and Martin. Even if you want to look something online, go look at their website, right? Don't go to random books. Don't go to random resources or websites because you're most, more than likely to be led astray. Last few days may vese be. If you have to attempt something or if you have to now focus on something, go to the correct source, right? Now, then come your parts of speech questions. Parts of speech questions have become very popular with UPSC and for good reason. This raises the level of the question paper a little bit. Of course, but again, like I said, there has to be a difference between people who just qualify an exam versus the ones who get merit, who score really well. So parts of speech questions will uh, come in the following manner. You will have a sentence. A bit of the sentence will either be in bold or a bit of the sentence will be underlined. Now that you have to pick up what kind of part of speech it is, whether it's an adverb. Adverb may be type hai. Is it adverb of manner, adverb of place, of frequency? Or they can ask you what tense is it, right? Again, tenses are only of three types, past, present, and future. And each of those has the following, like you have simple present, present continuous, present perfect, present perfect continuous. Look at the uses of those tenses. And that is how you're going to revise those now. That is how you're going to master those, okay? They could ask you to uh, identify the tense. Again, it's almost like a formula, guys. At this stage, if you've revised well enough, there's no way you can get confused. They could even give you 
preposition questions. Now, it's maybe prepositions along se aa sakta hai. They underline the preposition and they ask you what kind it is. Okay, so not just knowing what part of speech it is, but it also becomes really important to know what type, what further classification of that part of speech it is. Right. So again, slightly tricky, slightly challenging. But nothing is insurmountable. कर सकते हो सब trainable हैं आप भी trainable हो you can go back look at the same rules you all have the same time now the only thing that will be different the only thing that will determine the winners from the losers will be the level of actual work and the motivation and your discipline throughout ठीक है अब motivation आएगा जाएगा discipline hopefully रहना चाहिए right now come to how you're going to attempt my suggestion is always to go with the quick questions first what do i mean by the quick questions quick questions would mean do the vocabulary bit vocabulary mein aa jayega aapka synonyms antonyms one word substitution idioms and phrases now the thing with these the beauty of these questions is ya to ye aate hain ya to nahi aate so agar to aate hain to jaldi ho jayenge if you don't know these then you are stuck either way then there is no way to guess right So do the quick questions like the vocabulary questions. Then go to spotting errors. Again, with spotting errors, like I told you, your gut instinct will kick in. So you will either know those questions well, or you will not know those those at all. So if you know those, solve. Get them out of the way. Then come to close tests. Come to fill in the blanks. Solve those questions. Get those out of the way. Do your active passive next. Your direct and direct speech next. Then come to PQRS questions. Not the S one S six type. just come to the ordering of words do those questions first because they will take a little less time than s1 s6 theek hai so again because cds mein 120 questions hai and there's negative marking there's also safety in numbers because it is a numbers game right so i want you to be able to comfortably and in the first go itself solve as many questions as you possibly can because agar you know and it's a psychological thing if you get stuck in a particular question then you tend to get stressed you tend to get nervous and you sort of screw up your further you know um your way further and don't get in your own way try and comfortably get through the quick questions try and get through the vocabulary bit try and get through the spotting errors fill in the blanks uh, pqrs before you come to s1 s6 and my suggestion is always to do the rcs the reading comprehension the passages at the very end right because no matter how simple they are they will take time and again you can go backwards you can read the questions of an rc first you can read the questions of the passage it will give you a hint regarding the content it will give you a hint regarding the text if you feel comfortable enough with the text solve that rc first quickly do a skim through of, of the other rcs some will be very dry very evidence based but don't get scared if it's a factual or an evidence based rc because sometimes those are easier to solve sometimes those you know uh they set the questions in a cut copy paste format like where you can just pick up certain bits from the rc and directly paste those as the answer right so don't get nervous don't get scared if you see something that you think looks very scary because it looks very daunting it looks very horrifying because bade sare numbers hain bahut sari terms hain those are sometimes simpler to solve okay so do a quick skim through see what you can comfortably get through right so that is how you will attempt the paper now all right so coming to the guesswork bit the guesswork will always be 30 to 40 percent of the total number of questions that you don't know. So let's assume in your first go around, you've been able to solve 100 questions comfortably, 100 out of 120. So you now have 20 questions left, right? So 20 questions left. Now I would suggest solving only about six to seven of those based on guesses, based on flukes. You know why? Because uh the way negative marking is it's to the tune of minus 1/3 even if all your questions even if all your guesses are wrong you will lose a limited number of marks right because a lot of times what happens is in competitive level exams sometimes people are able to score a decent number of marks but then they sort of get their attempt gets messed up because of the negative marking so the way to go about go around negative marking is 
attempt a minimal number or do 30 to 40 percent questions percent of questions out of however many questions you don't know so if you don't know 10 questions don't do more than don't attempt more than three to four and these guesses like i told you should either come from spotting errors or they should come from i would say uh like your rc portion if you can comfortably if you've understood the content if you've understood the text i would say even if you've understood 80 percent of the text then a guess might work right if you can't guess there then uh, i would say i would suggest attempt a guess in the fill in the blanks close test because again that will call into question your grammar rules and somewhere in your mind your grammar rules are still there they are that learning is still intact from school right so the number two areas i would say where you can attempt guesses would be spotting errors and fill in the blanks if there is perhaps one or two questions there are there are one or two questions that you want to attempt as guesses from the rc bit where you are confident enough about the content go for it okay but usse zyada don't try it because you might get bogged down by negative marking okay now again general some general tips some general tricks uh one trick that i use still for my examinations that that's very very popular with all the students is eat a little bit of chocolate you know where, while you're studying or before an exam preferably dark chocolate because dark chocolate has a higher level of cacao and caffeine and caffeine is good for short term memory and bursts of attention you know how caffeine wakes you up right so even while you're studying if you like coffee great there's no need to force yourself to drink it if you don't like it even drinking tea works so i would say a cup extra chai pee lena while you're preparing okay eat some sugar a little bit of sugar not too much because that again interferes with memory and attention but a little bit of sugar gives you a little energy gives you a bit of a kick and it helps the process the way i still i'm still a student by the way i'm still studying to get some one degree or the other so i'm currently in the middle of my doctorate and i need to put in a lot of study hours and the way i time them is i don't study for more than 40 minutes in an hour so i have 40 minute sessions maybe 3 4 5 sessions in a day when i can afford those and when i say 40 minutes of study time you give yourself 20 minutes off the reason we're not able to focus is also because we don't let our brain relax fully either jab hum relax kar rahe hote hain tab bhi hum apne aap ko daant rahe hote hain ke are yaar you should be studying you would rather be you should be doing this you would you know you should be doing that instead abhi tum kya time waste kar rahe ho so when you're studying give an absolute 100% give all your focus and then nothing should be able to move you but when you're relaxing give a 100% to that relaxation also and you know time yourself in this manner 40 minutes hote like you know like an alarm clock should go off and you then should switch into re refreshment recreation mode so after you've done your refreshment after you've gotten you know after you've done your recreation you've watched half an episode or something you've talked nonsense to a friend on the phone something then your brain is fresh then you go back to studying but that 40 minutes and the next session of 40 minutes nobody should be able to shake you matlab earthquake bhi aadana you should not be moved right and again like i always say focus on discipline guys not motivation and it's not that difficult in fact cds uh because there are 120 questions there's more room to play around there's more room to screw up uh i would genuinely suggest getting very good sleep before the examination don't pull that old engineers wali trick where you say i'm going to study 8 hours 9 hours the night before and then the next morning i'm going to go sit for an exam because a lot of times what happens is if your if your brain is not well rested you tend to go blank the next day so please take a very very helpful suggestion from somebody who's been a student all her life get really good sleep one night two nights three nights a week before focus on rest prioritize your sleep prioritize your rest but when you're studying when you study don't let anything or anybody get in the way okay so all the very best to all of you i hope to see you all on the other side i hope to see you all having cracked the exam and done really really well and proud of yourselves at the end of it for having given a great performance all right good luck all the very best